The highways that connect this great nation cross many barriers, and none is more formidable than Lake Superior. Whether traveling from the commercial and manufacturing centers in the east, or from the resource-rich and burgeoning markets of the west, transport must go either north or south of this vast inland sea. The two-lane bridge across the Nipigon River was constructed in 1937 and became the major gateway to Western Canada. It reduced driving time by over five hours compared to the southern route that involves multiple border crossings and saved an estimated 10 hours over any previous Canadian route utilizing the underdeveloped back roads above Lake Nipigon. But as our population grew and commercial truck transport became even more popular, the Nipigon Bridge, the narrowest section of the Trans-Canada Highway, has become a traffic bottleneck, sometimes bringing transportation to a standstill. It is time to open the road with a $100 million project to replace the old bridge with a new four-lane cable stayed bridge. Two lanes of the new bridge have already been built, allowing traffic to continue to flow. But now it's time to get the old bridge out of the way safely so that the other two lanes of the new one can be constructed. And who better for that task than the bridge demolition experts, Priestley Demolition. But because the bridge is spanning an immense 827 feet, 252 meters over the Nipigon River, that will be no simple job. Priestley Demolition will have to be innovative to accomplish this towering task. Today is Wednesday, December 2nd, 2015. It's the second day on site at the Nipigon Bridge, top of Lake Superior. The bridge is very high, we're 100 feet off the water. It's a very long bridge and the design of the bridge will make it very difficult to piece apart as we may often do. So we hired Western Mechanical to help us with the demolition here. We're gonna roll the bridge off to the west and do the demolition over ground just because of all the environmental concerns and constraints. The Nipigon River is the largest tributary into Lake Superior. We are at the very most northern tip of Lake Superior. Everybody's watching us. Department of Fisheries and Oceans, Ministry of Natural Environment. So we've installed an aluminum platform underneath this bridge as a slurry control. This platform's a walking platform. It goes underneath the bridge and we will move the platform along as we remove the deck and overhead. We love it up here just the same as everyone else. So we have to do everything we can to protect it. The crew starts this process by cutting access holes in the decking of the bridge so that Western Mechanical can get their jacks and rollers in place underneath. This is the access hole down to the working platform, the protection platform. We're going to be jacking this bridge up 
while we're doing the demolition. So Western's gonna be working, we're gonna be working. So the bridge will be getting lifted up six inches a day, something like that for a few days. Lifting the bridge up, then we gotta get the rollers underneath it. The rollers are what's gonna allow the bridge to be driven off with hydraulic drive. Back here where the machine is is where Pier 2 is. So we gotta remove the overhang from Pier 2 back towards Pier 3. So we'll use that platform to catch the slurry as we go. We'll just take that one, yeah. and the other one you can go, go do going that way. So take that one and that one, and that's good. So just basket, but stay tight off. We're right now, we've got this bridge jacked up. I think about 13 inches or so. And we've done all the preliminary work to put the rollers underneath the steel girders. We installed this king post, there's a cable system to hold up the far end of the bridge. When we roll it off to the west, we break the deck off on the west. But the portion of deck on this side of the bridge, the east side of the bridge, from that king post to the abutment, we have to remove it. Simply put, this is an enormous balancing act with the king post and cables supporting a moving cantilevered bridge. Every kilogram on both ends carefully calculated. Any wrong numbers could send this bridge crashing into the river below. This is the west side of the bridge here. We're just cutting overhang. Almost what they're doing, but this side we're keeping all the deck here. This is gonna be the side with all the weight to pull that side over. We just gotta cut the overhang to the first piers, and then from the pier to the embutment, we can just hammer and let it drop on the ground. crew works at removing the overhang on the western section and the overhang and decking on the eastern section in an effort to get this phase of the job done before the Christmas shutdown. And as the holidays approach, they're right on schedule to hit this bridge with everything they've got in the new year. Fast forward to early 2016, and the deck has been completely removed from the bridge east of the King Post and to the west, the overhang has been cleared away. With the rollers in place, the team of Priestley Demolition and Western Mechanical are just about ready to get this steel beast rolling. Well, the deadline for this bridge is as soon as possible because unfortunately where this bridge is built is where the second half of the new bridge is going to go. The distance from the abutment to the first pier is 160 feet. We hope to do that tomorrow, day one, March 2nd. Tomorrow is going to be difficult because as they roll the bridge, it's going to roll fairly quick and then we got to remove more deck and then we got to cut the girders and then we got to get the girders out of the way. And then we got to roll the bridge another 50 feet. We think we've got it planned to a T and we think there's absolutely nothing that could go wrong, but we'll just know for sure tomorrow once we start to roll this bridge. We're here preparing the bridge for de-launching. And what that really means is we've got 48 16 inch diameter rollers underneath the bridge and each one of those rollers can take 100 tons by itself. Eight of those rollers have got hydraulic gearboxes attached to them and each one of those hydraulic drives can put 10 ton of force into the bridge. We should have lots of power in order to roll the bridge forward. If the weather stays like this, the way it is this afternoon, and holds out for the rest of the week, we should have a great big opening here where the bridge is presently sitting. The bridge will begin its journey west in the morning. So to get a head start, the crew removes a small section of decking from the area. The rest will have to remain to act as a counterweight until it can be safely removed on shore. Also calculated into the counterbalance is the weight of the Link Belt 460. Not only does it keep the west end of the bridge weighted down, but it will constantly be removing more decking as the bridge is rolled. It is kind of fun when you're out there wiggling around and 
your mind's working all the time. Once they kick it in gear, you've got to keep motoring pretty fast. Time is of the essence, got to get it rolling. First light on day two of this operation brings with it some predictably seasonal cold weather. Batteries, when they get that cold, they go down, they will not hold their charge. We tried boosting and charging and nothing, so we have to replace batteries. Yep. Okay. Fortunately, the cold won't really hamper the work overall, but the crew will have to watch for gusting winds that could shut down the site completely. Beauty. Once the machines are powered up, there are a couple of last minute adjustments before they start the bridge rolling. One team makes a little more room on the western embankment for the leading edge of the bridge. While another takes care of some very important welding. See where the girders get wider down there? So underneath there's gusset of plates on top, so when you roll it, Bolt head sticking out at the bottom. They just fill it yeah. with steel shims. They weld them in place so it rolls up on top. It's like a ramp. Peter's asked for a couple guys to stay on this side. Just so when it starts going away. So you guys okay to stay here? Finally, after weeks of preparation, the moment of truth has arrived. The team waits for the first inches of bridge migration. March 2nd, 2016. We're gonna roll the Nipigon Bridge today. We brought a bottle of wine to mark its last ride. <laughs> the roller system seems to be functioning exactly as planned. The bridge creeps towards the west, where a squad is waiting to take the first section apart. Yeah, the bridge is now advanced about three feet, or about a meter, and it's rolling very smoothly. Hopefully it'll stay that way all day. Right now I'm pretty happy. <laughs> the first section is now safely in place over the embankment and the heavy machines roll in to remove some excess decking. It's time for PDI's skilled torch crew to step in and separate the first 45 feet of this steel monster. So what we can do guys, so we've got the one cut here. If you guys want, one guy go up the ladder and cut that top flange, let this piece fall off, and then we'll work our way across. We'll cut the top flanges. Yeah, we just close the road, cut a beam. Load the lead traffic, close the road, cut a beam. You watch how we handle these beams. Quick. The first part of this section is cut free, and the machines move in to take it off site. We rolled the, the bridge a full 50 feet now. We got the first little section of girder off. The end is a little longer than the rest of it because we got the end gusset plates here. We got a little bit of deck left on the end here. We're going to break off as the west are taking a little rest while we uh, get this cleaned up. We come back and we're rolling on 50 feet. We've traveled approximately 140 feet today. The weather has been cold, but it's, everything has gone very smooth. And hopefully by the time we shut down tonight, we'll have reached the splice right here behind me. And uh, hopefully we'll get 270 feet tomorrow.
section by section, massive hunks of steel are torn away from the old bridge structure. At the end of the day, Priestley demolition has reached its short-term goal of bridge removal to the first column, 160 feet worth. But there will be no time to rest on its laurels. Tomorrow will bring the even more ambitious goal of tackling the 270 feet that spans the distance between the first and second piers. As the morning breaks on the second day of rolling demolition, they've reached a critical point in the process. The portion of the bridge being supported by the king post is about to roll completely clear of the supporting piers. The full weight of the east portion of the bridge must now be supported by cables and counterweight. The first step in this procedure will be to tighten the cables on the king post to hold the excess weight and prevent a movement stopping sag in the bridge. With the cables tightened, the bridge is set to roll. As long as Andrew is on the controls, he can always put power to it to hold it, so it cannot run back. See Andrew? Ready when you are. Copy that. OK, all wheels are open. Rolling. Head flow, sir. How do we look, Larry? Everything looks good here. Off the rollers yet, Larry? Almost off of three of them. We are off all four rollers. Andrew, please start ramping the speed, please. The king post is working flawlessly, supporting the necessary weight. With the bridge now rolling again, the team can get to work on removing the largest portion of the bridge. So we've advanced off of pier number one, and we've progressed about 60 feet um, since then. We've had a little trouble with the wheels climbing the transitions in the underside of the girders. We've got a little tug with the excavator here, and things are coming along smoothly. We'll put a big dent in it this afternoon. The removal of the bridge from its moorings is the glory job, but all that material still has to be disposed of. We've taken out three sections already, 150 feet. We got about another 200 feet to go. And hopefully in a couple hours, we'll be uh, almost there. to Marathon of the scrap. We've got a third truck loaded and we're going to load another couple trucks hopefully even yet today. It's about four o'clock. Hopefully one more big day tomorrow. We should be off the next pier. And then Saturday and Sunday when we've got the last section of the steel girders to come down. Not bad, Tony, not bad. The team works right through the weekend to make sure this bridge is out of the way on schedule. After removing a sufficient amount of the overpass, they haul down the king post and then attack as much of the remaining bridge as this engineering solution will allow. The final section sits on a single pier, no longer over the environmentally sensitive riverbed, so the crew will use an entirely different method of demolition to bring this section to the ground. The rolling is finally complete and we're going to start uh, demolishing the pier that holds up the, the beams. Our plan of attack here, we're going to pre-cut all the girders to the flange just in front of the abutment there. And then we're going to break off the corners a little at a time each side. And then uh, once that's down, the, the two beams on the end will be free. 
that we're going to start in the middle and just going to start chipping away slowly, slowly. And as the pier comes down, the, the, the girders will come down with the pier. And that's it. That's the plan. But before they can attack that final section, a little bit of important housekeeping. There is still a freestanding pier occupying some valuable real estate. The general contractor wants to start building new footings for the second half of the new bridge immediately. And this remnant of the old bridge stands in their way. It has to go. While PDI works on this teardown, Western Mechanical will utilize the time to remove their rolling equipment from the remaining bridge segment. There we go. We're flying now. The Riverside Pier disappears, one chunk of concrete at a time. And finally, the team can shift its attention to removing the final section of the bridge. Except, there's a potentially time-sucking equipment malfunction. The Volvo High Reach required to bring the pillar down from underneath the bridge cracks a line and must be repaired. Luckily, PDI always has the right people on site to manage such a crisis. Frank broke the machine. <laughs> uh, lines cracked inside the breaker, I guess, is uh, sometimes you have some back pressure and you'll get steel lines cracking. And it was light enough where it wasn't spraying out where Frank could tell as soon as he got out and noticed it. It's somewhere underneath here. And usually you can do that, blow gently, the crack will appear. It's in that weld somewhere. That's it. Hopefully uh, Western helps us out. They're going to run two beads of weld right around where it's welded from the factory and we'll put her on and good to go, I guess. A speedy collaboration between the Priestley Mechanics and Western's welders gets the high reach back up and running. They're ready to bring this pier to its knees. Hammer that side of the pier. We have her this side of the pier, then we have her the center of the pier, and slowly let this thing come down until it slips off onto the ground. And after that, we got to cut her up in sections and get her out of there. The machine operators bring down the column in a ballet of controlled demolition until finally the last chunk of bridge comes crashing down. All that remains of the 1937 Nipigon Bridge is some twisted metal and crumbled concrete. The torchmen are sent in one last time to unleash sparks into the Nipigon night. Oh man, this is probably one of the best projects I've been involved with. A little collaboration with Western by the Priestly Demolition. We got to tackle down this bridge like real awesome. Had some downtime, but when we got to go, we got at it and everything went smoothly. It was uh, well coordinated and it was a good effort and uh, we got it down. Priestly Demolition once again has flexed its bridge removal muscle and shown that with innovative ideas, a hard-working, talented crew, and great partnerships, a seemingly impossible job is achievable. Yeah.